Hello, my name is Tom Dupont. I'm with Codesmith Tools, and today I'm going to be doing part one in our two-part video series over Plinko, Codesmith's replace and extend alternative to Microsoft's link to SQL. This video will cover an overview of Plinko, where it came from, what it is, and what it has to offer over Visual Studio's implementation of link to SQL. The latter part of this video will showcase a new feature in Plinko 2.0, the Quick Start, during which we'll be generating a complete Plinko data project integrated with a dynamic data website and ADO.NET web services all in under 60 seconds. So let's begin. Where did Plinko come from? Well, Link to SQL is a new feature added in Visual Studio 2005 and the .NET Framework 3.5. It is an ORM, Object Relational Mapping Provider, built into Visual Studio that generates business entities and link queries for a SQL data source. We here at Codesmith thought Link to SQL was a great idea, but we did not like several of the things about its implementation in Visual Studio. Firstly, many developers, including ourselves, don't like black boxes. So our motivation in creating these templates was to remove that black box and allow ourselves and other developers the ability to customize the output of the link to SQL designers. We also wanted to extend the functionality of the generated classes to include such things as business rules, authorization rules, additional framework support, and other features. Of course, we didn't just stop at our own internal list. We looked out on the internet and saw what other people were doing or requesting to enhance their Link to SQL experience. We put all of these things together and thus we created Plinko. So, what is Plinko? Plinko is a complete set of Codesmith templates that will generate code to replace and enhance Link to SQL in a .NET project. It will generate everything from a DBML to business entities and business logic managers or query classes. Also, as I mentioned earlier, Plinko now includes a quick start that will generate a dynamic data website complete with a REST API. And so we come to the big question. What does Plinko have to offer over Visual Studio's Link to SQL? Firstly, it can generate or update a Link to SQL DBML file from a database schema. It includes tables, stored procedures, functions, and views, and offers the ability to exclude objects based on a regex pattern. And it has the ability to automatically remove object prefixes and suffix from any of these objects. Unlike Link to SQL, Plinko's DBML files can be refreshed based on the current database schema without losing customizations. And even with all these additional features, the DBML can still be customized using the normal Visual Studio 2008 designer. Secondly, Plinko generates the Link to SQL data context and Link to SQL entity classes. Should the user want to use ADO.NET data services, the data context can be generated to include an implementation for the iUpdatable interface, which is required to do updates. Additionally, Plinko generates separate files for each business entity instead of one massive file. These files use partial classes so that custom code modifications can be written without fear of being lost during regeneration, and for organization, the generated entity files are added to the project as code behind files corresponding to their entity classes. Also new in Plinko 2.0, Business entities now include a metadata class to allow adding custom attributes to your entity's properties. These can include things such as business rules for the Plinko rules engine and UI hints for dynamic data. Third, Plinko includes the option to automatically generate your preference of manager or query classes from your data source. These classes provide access to common queries based on primary keys, foreign keys, and indexes. And all these common queries are exposed as iQueryable so they can be chained together. A great feature of the manager objects, they add a customizable business rules engine to enforce entity validation and business and security rules. This rule engine provides easy to read exception handling and can be customized by simply altering the attributes on business entities. When coupled with our new metadata objects and their related features, it becomes a very powerful and elegant tool to enforce business rules. And last, but certainly not least, because they are open source Codesmith templates, all templates can be customized to meet your specific needs. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the Quick Start. Now we here at Codesmith Tools have heard of other Quick Starts that will get you going in under 10 minutes. We decided to give all those guys a run for their money and design one that was going to get you going in under 60 seconds. So to narrate that, I'm going to go ahead and run this real quick, and then after we've seen all the output and what it generates and how quickly you can do it, we'll come back and look at all the details. So in order to run the Quick Start, all you have to do is locate the Quick Start CST in the root of your Link to SQL folder, which when you install Codesmith should get put into your My Documents under Codesmith Samples 5.0 Templates Frameworks Link to SQL. So I'm just going to double click this real quick. And start your stopwatch, by the way. 
All we have to do here is select our database, which can come from any configured data source. I'm going to choose Pet Shop. And it's going to automatically fill in the rest of our Quick Start properties there. And all we have to do is click Generate. So as you can see, it just generated us a solution with three projects, a data project, test project, and UI project. We're going to go ahead and set the UI project, which is a web app, as our startup project. And all we have to do is hit play. I'm going to say no, we can run without debugging. And here we go, a complete dynamic data website. Now, that took an extra moment to launch the first time because it had to generate and compile and execute for the first time. But I think you get the idea of from uh, start to finish how quick that was, definitely under 60 seconds. So uh, let's take a look at what we have right here. We have all of our tables from our pet shop database. And if we open one up, we can see all the rows for our account table nicely laid out. We can check the details of one of these rows. We can jump from an account to an associated profile just by clicking the link it provides us. We can go ahead and edit this if we'd like. Now Plinko took the liberty of updating a lot of data attributes on the business entities that control the look and feel of this page. It's set anonymous to be a checkbox. And these are multi-line text boxes, even though perhaps maybe username shouldn't be. But this is all customizable if we go back into Visual Studio and look at the entities. Again, they're just all attributes. It's really easy to control them. So let's go ahead and hit cancel here because we don't want to do any updates. This has brought us back to the profiles table. So um, I think you get the idea that this is a complete and working website. So one more feature we want to look at is we want to look at the data services. And that's going to be Pet Shop Data Service because our database name was Pet Shop .svc. And here you go, these are ADO.net data services and they're working. We can even check out a specific table. So let's go to Account. And although my Firefox thinks it's an RSS feed, this is a data service and it is working properly. So let's close this back out and go take a look at what's actually in Visual Studio and go back over what we just did. Well, first of all, when um, the PetShop.DataCSP here generated on build, it altered the project outside of Visual Studio. So we have to hit reload there. That really should only happen the first time. And notice once we reloaded, uh, entities and managers appeared here. So let's stop debugging and actually go through this little by little. And silly me, I told it not to debug. Well, first things first, the CST is still open. So let's go ahead and look at that from when we generated. Now, the only thing we did was select the source database, and that auto-populated a lot of the other fields for us based on that. Uh, it updated the location, and this is where it dumped all the output. So this is where our actual solution and projects exist. Uh, by default, it puts it into your My Documents, CodeSmith slash templates, and then it puts it in a directory of the actual source database name. So that's where all our files are. And the solution name itself, again, took on the name of the source database, Pet Shop. Uh, next, we have options for our three projects. We have our data project, and the first option here is false by default, and it allows you to copy all of the Plinko templates to a local folder for your project so they have their own copy. Otherwise, the CSP in your data project will just use a relative path to the ones, or to the templates, I'm sorry, where it's been pulled from source control. Next object here is the data project's name, which uh, defaults to the source database name dot data, which we can see over here. And then we have our interface project, and this is our actual, well in this case, web app. But as we see here, there's project type, and currently we support having none, a web app, or a dynamic data website. And again, the same rule applies with the name. And whether or not we want to include data services, which I showed off earlier because this is true, and it generated them. And last but not least, we have our test project, which we can control whether or not we want to generate at all. So in this case, we do have a test project. As you can see here, it's empty. And again, it controls the name based off the source database used for generation. So that's it, the entire Quick Start CST. Uh, plenty of fairly simple options, and you can get that going with the click of only a few buttons. 
So let's close that now and actually look at what Plinko has for us inside of Visual Studio. But wait, I'm sorry, I forgot to go over the very first two and possibly most important options in the Quick Start. Or I'm sorry, the second and third. Uh, target language for the solution. We have Plinko templates for both VB and C Sharp. So you can choose the Quick Start to be in either of those languages and it will create the entire thing that includes all three projects and the Plinko output as whichever language you prefer. So really important feature there, we have VB and C Sharp for Plinko. And the third option here being Launch Visual Studio. And notice when I hit Generate originally, it just immediately brought up Visual Studio. We just clicked play, we ran. Well, you could choose to just generate the output and then manually go open Visual Studio yourself later. And you do that by just setting this to false. Okay, now that I mentioned that, now we can look at Plinko inside of Visual Studio. And so in our solution, we have three projects. And really the only one we need to pay attention to is the PetShop.data. The .test project is just an empty project, and the .ui project is just a dynamic data website that is using our pet shop data context. There's really nothing fancy about it. In order to make another project use a project that contains Plinko, you just need to include references to the project itself, so in this case, petshop.data and codesmith.data. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Other than that, this project here has a connection string, and its global ASX is set up to use it. But other than that, there's nothing fancy about it. So looking at our PetShop.data, originally this started out as an empty project with just a CSP in it. And if we manage our outputs here, you'll notice there are three CSPs, the DBML, the Entities, and the Managers. And we have generated three things, the DBML, the Entities, and the Managers. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And we will go over how to configure those and everything inside those CSPs in the second video in this series. For now, we're just trying to give a high-level overview. So starting with the DBML, this is just a standard Microsoft DBML schema. We can open it up and actually look at it with the editor. And to anyone who's used Link to SQL, this should look very familiar. Because again, it is just the default editor. And we can actually control things from here and edit things from here. But again, we'll save that for the second video. Uh, the only real difference here is notice that in the code behind, there is no actual um, .cs code behind file. And that's because we're not generating all the entities to one big file. We're going to spread them out into multiple files. But other than that, it's just your standard DBML document. Uh, although, although Plinko is using it in a fancy manner, uh, the document itself is just the standard DBML. So now let's look at the entities. I'm going to go ahead and open up project here, or product, I'm sorry. So on the front end of the file, uh, it's a very simple class. This is for all your custom code or anything you want to write for the actual project, product business entity. Uh, we have a link here to our latest Plinko templates in the readme. Uh, we have a link to the video tutorials, which I'm making right now. A mm, little bit of a paradox there. And we have this really cool, neat metadata class now, and this is new in Plinko 2.0. This is to help manage your attributes and any of the properties in your business entity. Uh, there's some really cool stuff that is done with this here. We have this really neat merge strategy that preserves and persists attributes, but meanwhile keeps all these actual properties synchronized to the generated file. But again, that's all stuff we're going to go into in the second video. I just want to show that it's here and that it's easy to use. So if we look at the backend file, Aside from just having this nice folder structure with multiple files for each entity, uh, we also want to point out that one advantage over Link to SQL we have is just the format of the code. It's very easy to read. Uh, there's lots of regions that break down into logical things. We can look at actual associations. And again, notice the additional attributes that we provide that Link to SQL does not. We have data members for our dynamic data. And we can look at things that, again, are just broken down into easy to read locations. Hold on, let me collapse the definitions and then reopen that. So here are all of our column map properties. And again, a lot more attributes provided here. We have string length, and this is used by the dynamic data uh, front end again. So again, I, just, I can't stress enough that we are providing link to SQL only with more. There's no degradation here. There's no loss. We have serialization. We have more attributes. We have metadata types. It's broken into controllable file structures that are very easy to use and very logical in their flow. And so we come to the last thing we're going to look at in this video, and that is the manager objects. And these managers are a great place to start with regards to business logic. Uh, they're going to go ahead and generate some very straightforward get methods that are based off of primary keys, foreign keys, and indexes. So here we see we have our primary key get method. We have a foreign key get method to get by category ID. And then we have several indexes, including very complicated ones that are multi-column, such as get by category ID, product ID, and name. And they all have their parameters for that. And all of them are going to return an iQueryable result so they can be chained together 
and again, continuously be easy to use. So this is structured just like the entities were. There's a generated in the back and then a front end where you can add custom methods that aren't going to get regenerated every time. And that's only the beginning of what the uh, manager objects can do. They actually also have a rule system built in that you can see at runtime where if something breaks, the rule system will tell you and it'll give you a very detailed message of what you're doing wrong if you didn't include a required field. And it'll make things very easy to use and it's also very easy to customize using attributes on the entities which we were looking at earlier. Um, but again, you can see that very well in runtime and we'll be going into that in the second video. And so I believe that concludes this particular video. Um, I hope I was able to convey what Plinko is and what it is providing, especially in addition over linked to SQL. So if this caught your eye and you want to know more, specifically the details about how to implement this without just using the uh, basics set up, to, set up for us by the quick start, please tune into our second Plinko video. But until that time, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for other videos, or perhaps content regarding to Plinko, please contact us at community.codesmithtools.com. My name is Tom DuPont, and thank you very much for using Codesmith.